Um, I'm Dennis. I'm one of the co-founders of Dashbot. My Twitter ID is SIND, which is just Dennis backwards. Um, we started Dashbot to do conversational analytics uh, and on, proudly displayed on the home pages how many messages we processed over, I guess, almost the last two years. Um, should hit 30 billion in the next few days. It's really exciting. Um, we do analytics for Slack, Facebook, Kick, uh, Google Assistant, Alexa, and Twitter natively, but we actually do any conversational UI. Um, because with our generic interface, we can anything that models as a conversation, which is a series of messages back and forth between users or users and bots, users and skills, users and apps, we can handle. Uh, why did we do this? Um, well, prior to find, founding Dashbot, we were actually building bots ourselves. We built a bot called GameMonk, which is a Slack bot that allows you to play games with your team. Um, it's still one of the most popular bots in the Slack ecosystem. If you go to the Slack, Slack uh, bot store and, or bot listing, uh, we are number 22 still um, on, the, on, the, on the leaderboard. When we built it, what we realized, we launched it and team was trying, team, teams were trying to use it. They, you basically play a bunch of trivia games or word games with your team and we couldn't see what was happening. Um, so we tried to hook up some of the traditional um, event-based you know, analytics platforms that are designed for websites and mobile applications. And we learned that really traditional analytics, they just don't work well for conversations. It's more work um, hooking up the events. It's just really big pain um, having to instrument every single little thing that happened within your, within your conversation. And honestly, it's the wrong paradigm. Um, we're missing the conversation because you know, like words, they have meaning. You're missing that. Uh, images that are being sent to your bot, they move now, they have meaning. Emojis, if any of you are millennials, they have a lot of meaning. <laughs> and what we learned is that conversational data, as we started ingesting a lot of this data, is actually rich, we found it more rich and more actionable than the event-based data that we had been working with in the web and mobile days. And that's why we built Dashbot, to help you really take a look at and analyze what's happening in these conversations that are happening between your users and your apps and skills. What metrics are important when dealing with conversation? Well, of course, there's users. And this concept, of course, was, you know, it's been around forever, even before the web. <laughs> um, but in bots, there's a few different concepts. So, for example, if you have a bot that's sending messages to four people, the little sunglasses I've, that have appeared on little people indicate that they've read these messages. And then our friend in the bottom actually replied. Um, what does this mean from a user perspective? This actually means that you have a total of four users. Uh, three of them are active because they, they've actually read the message. Um, and one we call engaged because they've actually replied. And if you think about this, this is sort of similar to what you would, you would see in like an email type uh, metric or analysis. Um, and it's here in the bot world. And that's what you see in Dashbot. We have four lines, one new, active, engaged, and total. And this really just shows you that traditional analytics don't work well for bots. Um, in sessions, uh, we took this concept and borrowed it from the web. We saw it in web where in the mobile world. Um, it is basically a session is a series of interactions with a timeout. In the web world, we've seen this defined as a series of page views with a 30 minute timeout. You leave your browser for 30 minutes, that's a session. In, in mobile, they found that they could decrease this timeout to 15 minutes and that's a mobile session. For conversation, what we have found is that the best definition is really a series of conversation, conversational messages with a time of five minutes, because if you leave the conversation in five minutes, that really feels like a new session. In the case of, of uh, Google Home and Alexa, these voice sessions, we actually have a new concept, which is one of the things that already alluded to that we're launching today, is with voice sessions, you can have a series of messages with a, with a five minute timeout, but then you throw your user an audio file that plays for 15 minutes. But then if the user then stops it nine minutes into the session or into the play, we then call that, we cut the session there, which is a nine minute. So this is one of the special cases that show you that, once again, traditional analytics don't work well for conversations. But what about the words? Because we're, you know, this data is so interesting and exciting. Um, we help you understand the top messages and intents that are being sent to your bot. So, Here's an example of that Game Monk bot, the game bot that we built for Slack, and our top messages that are sent. The top ones are A, B, C, D, they're your answers to trivia questions, but there's one really interesting one down here, which you probably can't see, it says stop. So I'm like, what happened to cause my users to say this word, because that means they 
hated the game that we started. So that's where we introduce the concept of the message funnel. You click on stop and we show you for the cases that your bot received the word stop, here are all of the things that the people said before, um, that the bot said before that caused your users to say this word. And what I love is as I look in, this is the one that they really hate. Name as many venture capital firms as you can in 60 seconds. They really, really hated that game. So. <laughs> but we still throw it out because it actually works really well for the VC meetings. Um, so <laughs> in terms of these words, we're getting all these words now. Many of you are using uh, the amazing NLP platforms that are out there. And these help turn essentially words and concepts into intents and entities. Um, with, our, with Dashbot, you can see all of these intents that are actually being processed by your bot. So in this case, this is a sample bot that we see a whole bunch of different, what I would call generalized intents coming into your bot. Um, and as you dig more closely, you're like, oh, that's a cool one, what's love? Uh, we can actually dig in and see all of the atomic messages that mapped to that intent, which then is really helpful for understanding how good your NLP is. Um, and then I think Jeff actually alluded to one, one of these intents before, which is the unknown or fallback intent um, you should definitely be digging into that one to take a look at what your bot is not handling. So this is a list of essentially messages that users have been sending our bot to, that maps to that fallback intent, um, which is the top ones are I'm feeling sad or confused. And this is a movie bot um, that we built. We don't know why the users are, are telling this to your, to your bot, but definitely dig into your fallback intent to take a look. Um, here at Dashbot, now that we've processed nearly 30 billion messages, um, we've been digging around with some what we call kind of data science -y, uh, projects. One thing that we just launched was is word clouds. This is a visualization of all of the words that, is bare, that have been sent to our game bot over the past two years or for a while. Um, but of course, you know these words don't just exist in a cloud, right? Because they're connected, and they, when they become connected, they become messages. And when messages are connected together they become sessions, which is why we now also have a visualization of the behavior flow. This renders really horribly on the big screen, but this is basically a series of nodes that are connected um, by the paths with which your users are using to navigate through the conversation in your bot. Um, so what's, what we found to be the most interesting kind of first lesson when you look at your behavior flow is this red node, which represents the exits from your bot sessions. Um, and in this case, you can see here that the, the top message that causes a session end from the game monk bot is actually his introduction. So see that message, which is I am a bot, that has that, you can't read the rest of it, but that's actually the bot introducing itself to the new Slack team that installed it. And from that message, we see 65.93% of our sessions exit. Try doing this with one of our mobile or website analytics. So we've, we've long stopped using them, um, but I'll remind you traditional analytics don't, don't work well. <laughs> Okay, so I've bashed them enough, um, but I want to say that some traditional analytics do work well for conversations. Um, for example, in this sample movie bot that we built, um, we can see people are talking with the bot, um, and finally, you know, sometimes they'll make a purchase. Um, sometimes tracking this as an, event, as an event really does make sense. So uh, other things that you can track well with, with events are URL clicks, social shares, um, and revenue. So because you know, these are atomic events that are not quite part of the conversation, so you don't want them to be analyzed as part of the word, word flow, but you do want to track them as events. So we do have a Dashbot Events API that allows you to track the number of these events types of things. Um, other more traditional analytics that we, ha we handle are goals and conversion funnels. Um, here's the, the conversion funnel of our movie bot, the number of people that have started a conversation, location supplied as our secondary kind of intermediate step in the funnel, and then how many people purchase the, per per purchase the movie ticket. Um, and of course, we love retention. How often do your users come back? Um, and all of these would be considered kind of, you know, charts you would see in, in, a, in a traditional analytics uh, provider because some traditional analytics, analytics do work well for conversations, but we, just, we do those too. And to, to finish up, Dashbot is actually more than just analytics. Um, you can follow along with your live transcripts. I, I heard a few of our, our happy customers have been digging around in these a lot. Um, this is a live chat with our Ask the Cat demo bot. Uh, and why would you want to do this? Because you can actually monitor, pause, and intervene in a chatbot conversation when this happens. Um, I can pause the bot right, right in Dashbot, type in, hello, I'm a human, how can I help you? 
end stand on, along my way, um, which is a great, great for bots that handle customer service or sometimes, honestly, for a little fun with some people messing with your bot. <laughs> um, but how do you actually know when to take over a session? Um, for that, I would actually use Dashbot alerts. Um, alerts are basic programmatic uh, rules that you tell us when you want to be alerted when something's happening. In this case, I am creating a rule that says whenever the bot receives the word help, post something to my Slack webhook, which will then drop, some, drop a message. Whenever someone sends help, the Dashbot will post either an email or a link into my Slack channel or any webhook, um, in this case a Slack message that I can then click on from Slack, which then jumps in, jump, drops me right into the conversation that we saw before, and I, can and I can have fun with my user. So, because Dashbot is actually more than, more than just analytics. Um, oop, that's a double sign. And now, as, as already actually alluded to before, um, some exciting announcements. We have, we're launching a few new things today. Um, we have a new and improved dashboard. So for all of you that have been using Dashbot for a long time, um, thank you for looking at the old dashboard. But we are very excited about this new one. Um, we have a huge number of, number of reports and interfaces um, along the left-hand navigation of Dashbot. And we have consolidated the kind of what we believe to be the best snapshot view of your daily usage into one gorgeous dash, uh, dashboard. The second thing we've actually launched is audio transcript sessions, which I, which I discussed before, which is when your Alexa skill or Google Action sends an audio file, we are now using that audio file length and stop, stop and pause signals in the calculation of your sessions, which is a feature that a lot of our skill developers have been asking for. Um, and as far as some new super new features that you've never seen before, um, retention percentile. This is basically a chart that compares your bot or skill with the rest of the skills in the, in the industry and benchmarks your retention against the uh, bots and skills in the similar platform. And I'll be going through the, all of these in deeper detail after lunch. Um, and the last feature that we're really excited about to launch is the Dashbot Audience Builder. Um, so once your bot has been interacting with thousands and thousands of users, what we're finding now is that we want to know which of these users are doing the things that we want them to do. So this is a real-time tool that allows you to slice and dice and navigate your entire, nav your entire ecosystem of users that have been ever speaking to your bot. So you can search by intent, by message, by any metadata that we have in the user object, we are, we're allows, allowing you to search um, and create populations with which to, you can retarget to them, you can do lookalike campaigns, you can broadcast messages to them or just simply understand, you know, for the users that do these intents, what, what other intents they do, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all of these features, I will be going into a deeper dive after lunch. So, and that's it. Now we can eat. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take questions, or do you want to take questions? Do you want to take questions? I guess I'm two minutes early. Yeah, we have a couple minutes for questions. Okay. For Dennis, if anyone. <laughs> Hands up if you have any questions. Who wants to go to lunch? There's one. Um, I'm interested in what is the most useful and the, the opposite metric in your dashboard. The, the question is the most, the useful, most useful or popular metrics. And yeah, the so um, the question was what are the most useful or popular metrics within dashboard? Um, I think that depends on the life cycle of where you are in the development of your bot or skill. Um, on if, for the developers that are just starting out to have integrated with us and are sending us data, they're, they're trying it out. They're, we see, we're seeing them constantly looking at the live transcripts and the transcripts to basically read through all of the conversations happening between your users and your bot. Because subjectively, it's a great way to really understand and read the user's words, in their own words, what they're expecting from your bot. You, know, you can ask them a question, you can give them a button to push, but a lot of times they won't even push that button, they won't answer the question, they'll do something else. So that's at the beginning. Then as your bot starts to get more traffic, we find, we, we find people spend more time in the top messages and top intents report to really understand how to tune and optimize your responses. Um, and then finally, as you're really starting to kick ass, um, goal funnels, which is you know, your bot should have a goal. There's a reason why your bot is, is, is speaking with users. Um, seeing how they're flowing through goal funnels based on different cohorts of you know, uh, which, which sources of, of users result in the most goal, goal conversions. So hopefully that answers your question. 
the least useful. Um, we're, huh. <laughs> I'll have to get back to you on that one, but I'm a little bit of a product pack rat, so I love, I, I know I need to kind of remove some features that are up there. We do have a lot. Um, I don't know, do you know? There's no useless things on our platform. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one more and we can go to lunch. Uh, so what kind of NLP package do you use when you're trying to understand the query intents for analyzing, like generating the analytics for uh, so, so I guess the question was what kind of NLP package that we're using on our side. Um, so I guess we, the, the first layout level is you should, tell, you should help us help you. So tell us what you think the intent is, right? So for every given atomic message that you're sending us, send us the accompanying intent. And so our first job is to report back to you which intents are mapped with which messages. Um, as far as you know, what NLP we're additionally running on, on the messages, we're trying all of the platforms right now. Um, we're in more of the experimental phase. Um, so we do do some sentiment calculation, which we use a, a bag of words approach. Um, on all of the words that are sent to your bot, and that is one of the sent sentiment is one of the reports that we have. Um, but we're not actually doing some, we're not doing any whole scale um, uh, intent mapping or entity extraction. Especially, we we did some initial experiments, and I think that intent and en entity extraction is so domain specific that without having kind of without knowing which domain each bot is, there's no maybe we could do like a small talk domain for everything. Um, but we're still trying to figure out what our customers want from that side. So. Our first step is to help you do that NLP better, and our second step is possibly to help you do even more, more, more better. <laughs>